This is Natalie from the Vintage Cross Stitch Niche bringing you another sort of educational video. I'm using my phone, so and I'm on call, so if I get an interruption, um, you may see me moving around or something, so just a uh, FYI. This video is called Cross Stitch Politics the good, the not so bad, and the ugly. But before we get to that, which is sort of the semi-educational part, we're gonna start out like every other video and show you what I'm working on and what I've finished. First off is a finish. Susanna Milnick from Hands Across the Sea. Can you see it? Beautiful, huh? Big. This is on 40 count with called four silk. And I believe, I don't know the fabric, I'm sorry. Um, but I thought it looks great. It's a similar fabric to the called for, which let's see, do I have it here? I use this so much my chart fell apart. To the called for and uh, I got to get that framed that frame is the framing used to be all done by the cross stitch cupboard which did a marvelous job but now I have to mail it off because the cupboard doesn't have a framer anymore she retired um, they are looking for somebody but they haven't really committed so I'm going to send that off to the attic who will be doing it um, via text and email where they'll send me photos of frames and so forth. Okay, what am I working on? Well, I'm working on two different samplers. One is Jesus Wept by the Scarlet Letter. Uh, Jesus Wept circa 1820 and um, she doesn't really tell me where this is from, but that's okay. And it was a two-sided sampler. I'm only going to do the one side, the top. You're going to have a hard time seeing this. It's not the best photo, but there. This is a sampler worked over one, which is what I'm doing. I have a Gloriana Tudor Silk, which is really thin. And this is 37 count legacy linen and Russian tea cake. Can you see? Isn't that pretty? Um, there's some white on this sampler and um, the problem with the white is it doesn't really show up. And uh, so what I did was I just added a little red color. Here's my color palette. Okay. And here's just a little touch of red that I added. There's always room for red. <laughs> so that, that red crown was originally done in white. I do have a white crown on there, which you can't even see. So, or whatever, it's like really an off white. Um, really enjoying this over one. Over one is not difficult. The problem is if you make a mistake, it's very difficult to remove. So um, not impossible, but challenging. So that's one thing I'm, wor I'm working on, Jesus Wept. Second thing I'm working on is Margaret Doyle, which was from the Kitten Stitcher. It's actually a limited edition exclusive. Okay, this came as a kit. Um, this fabric is, let's see if it's written on here. I don't remember the fabric. Let's see. Eureka by Fox and Rabbit. That's what this fabric is and it's supposed to be, it's 40 count. Isn't that pretty? Here, I'll have to get closer to see the color, right? And um, this is actually harder to stitch because it's, I love these little booklets, but 
you know, it's hard to do the transitions here. For whatever reason, I'm having a little annoyance with that. I'm getting through it though, but very, very pretty. So I'm sort of alternating. Just some kudos to the Scarlet Letter. I'll show you something I really like. First off, this is nice paper. I know I'm showing you a little bit of the sampler, but that's okay. You can't do anything with this. But look, I'm, I'm working on this side, and when this comes to an end, going to the next page, you see quite a bit here. So it's so easy to find your place, as opposed to maybe one little line, and then you gotta line them up and figure out where you are. No problem figuring out where you are. Kudos. Wonderful idea. I'm not a big fan of loose pages, except for this is great. So, Jesus wept. Some new acquisitions. I did not show you the new, um, the new things that I did receive from Victorian Rose Needle Arts. She had a uh, like a Facebook live sale where everything was about half price. So I bought a bunch of samplers, uh, well, charts from there. Uh, Threads of Gold, PA 1808, out of print, a god-awful copy. But the thing is that uh, there were these copies made that were sold that are legit. Otherwise, I would have thought this is bootleg. Do you see those little flowers? Those like daisies in the, in the, in the border? I thought the border was so unique in this that that's, I, I really think this is going to be beautiful. Um, so that's one. I'll just go through these quick. Uh, two is Pineberry Lane, October 31st. Okay. Three is GGR Teresa Helms. I've seen this multiple times. It's gorgeous. Four is another out of print Threads of Gold, Dorothy Snowball. Um, very pretty colored sampler, different. I needed these like a hole in the head, but that's okay. This is so pretty. Um, I like the verse. It says, it is education... It is education forms the common mind, just as the twit is bent, the trees inclined. Interesting. Um, French Garden, which I always admired and loved, and uh, saw this at a good price and said, I'll take it. The other thing I did get was, uh, which I forgot to show you, I've got this a while back and it was underneath something and I, I never, I forgot I had it, very sad. A visit from St. Nick and this is the one of the Dying to Stitch Club pieces. Look at the little the Santa guy, isn't that cute? Just darling, just a darling little sampler. It's not huge either, but I love the way they package this stuff. Very pretty. Okay. Um, I did get some scissors too. Like a, there was this whole hoopla about um, Jean Marie Boulot, uh, the French famous scissor maker who passed away oh a few months ago, and uh, I never bought one of his handmade scissors, and uh, there was pretty much none left in the world, so. The Hobby House Needleworks advertised they had some, so I bought one um, just to show you. Um, let's get it out. Pretty, right? Now, this one has Nogent on one side. Nogent is a city and uh, also apparently the name of the manufacturer. And it has a J.R. Jean, Jean Rouleau on one side. It has, I don't think you can see it, but it has the initials. Um, they're really light. They are super sharp. They're gorgeous. Um, very beautiful. 
basically a work of art. I don't know how useful they're going to be, but uh, really nice. Also made in the same factory are these scissors, which I am using right now and absolutely love. These are from the French Needle. Perfect. <laughs> I mean, they're the weight on them, the feel, the, the tips are so tippy. I, I was able to actually get the one over one out with these tips. Um, I had put on my site, like, hey, go get these. They're beautiful. There's only a few left. They're hand finished by John Rouleau. Not signed. I mean, you can never prove that, but, you know, I have, uh, I have no doubt they were. And uh, some of them were imperfect that got sent to people. Not my fault. I didn't send them. But um, the French Needle actually uh, refunded, refunded people. Uh, you send it back, you got your money back. Not a big deal, but my pair, boy was I lucky, was perfect. And I'm sure some others were too. Um, the second one I got, also hand-finished from Nogent, were these itty-bitty ones. Aren't they cute? What a nice little feel. Razor sharp, pointy, love them. Um, these I had. Um, I had bought these are also from Nogent and um, these are finished by John Rouleau. Um, these are have a rabbit or some sort of animal on them. These are bigger scissors. I've had them, I've had them, um, I haven't used these because they're sort of a size that I'm not crazy about using. I probably, I might sell these, but uh, they're just gorgeous for collectors, really nice. Um, and then I got these scissors. Um, this is a sewing kit that wasn't too much money. Uh, it was sold as unknown metal. Okay, I'll show you some of the things in here. These are scissors and they're actually, they cut and they're, they're nice. They, they come together, the tips, tips are steel. And this is a little needle case. Um, other than the tips, these are all solid um, silver. They're 800 silver. I had them tested. And um, so they were sold to me as unknown, but they're not plate and they're not tin. They're not fake. They're actually 800 silver. Um, sterling is 925, I believe. Okay. Nine, uh, which is 900, which is nine, excuse me, 92.5% um, silver. And uh, you'll see 950, 950 is 95% silver and 800 is 80% pure silver. It doesn't matter, they're French silver. Um, probably worth a little more than I paid for them because it's a complete set. It's got needle, um, some sort of all, uh, a, a little, um, Thimble, and it's in this nice little box. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep these or not. I, I bought them because I was so curious to see what they were. I suspected they were sterling and they, not sterling, but silver and they were. Um, this is a needle holder. It's oversized, but that's okay. I bought this because of the Art Nouveau design. Can you see? Now, this was an Etsy find. And I made an offer on Etsy. Okay, made an offer on Etsy. And the offer uh, was taken. This is Mark Sterling. Um, it's beautiful. I cannot wait to put a chain on the side. And this is going to be my little scissor holder when I go to a uh, retreat. So you can put... Let's just see. It came with a scissor, but it wasn't a really nice scissor. It was just a scissor. See? You can put a pen in here. Anything. Love it. So I bought this one because I just love the style, the flowers. I'd never seen anything like it. I have two more scissors I bought recently that are both figural, that are magnificent, that 
literally I pulled out to do the video and cannot find. Crazy, right? I have been looking all over. They are in the house and I put them down and now I have no idea. So I will find them later, I'm sure. Now on to an Amazon find. These are uh, between nine and $15 for 20, um, shipping included, which is a bargain. Whoop. <laughs> I love these, they're sparkly. Let's get them closer. They're sparkly, clear. They have this big spot for your floss and then another small spot for your, um, for your like little pieces. I'm using them now just to show you. have them all and what I do is I put the little labels on see <laughs> it's funny it comes out backwards but that's okay so I have them all with little labels that easily come off labeled what they are nice and neat really pretty they come in different shapes by the way just do a search of acrylic floss drops or floss holders um, I also got these just to see what they were like. And these are little flowers. See, these are gonna be awfully pretty. Um, the only annoying thing is they come with, all, those did too, like a, a film on both sides, which you have to peel off. It's sort of, uh, you can, it's just annoying. <laughs> so, but I guess that keeps them from getting scratched, so. That's the trade-off. Now to the meat. And I did write some stuff down. I actually uh, videoed this already and then watched it and decided I was a little too biased, so I decided to re redo this. Cross-stitch politics. The good, the not so bad, and the ugly. Now, good is obviously good. Not so bad means, okay, not, not bad, but you know, depends on your look on it, at it, and ugly. So there's no in between. Um, politics exists in everything, certainly in medicine and in every aspect. And I think it's gotten worse since the advent of the internet where people have so much more access to bad information and uh, propaganda. Propaganda exists on both sides. I'll give you a good example of propaganda in medicine. Um, Anti-abortion laws, which prohibit abortion at a certain point. This is just an example. Um, the left will tell you that means that if you're having a miscarriage, you'll be ignored or an ectopic pregnancy that the doctor won't touch you and won't fix, won't treat you. That's not true. <laughs> um, abortion means elective abortion. So if it's a non-viable pregnancy, no heartbeat, um, something with uh, that's universally fatal, something that the mother's life is extinct, like an, like, a, uh, like an infection, an ectopic pregnancy, which obviously is uh, non-vital, all of those are going to be treated no matter what the law is because that's what the law is, okay? So that's an example of in medicine. I've even heard doctors not in my field repeat, not in my field repeat this. Here's my husband again. So my husband asking me if I want pizza. So propaganda exists. With that said, cross-stitch has a little less politics than other fields, actually. Let's go to the good. We have met, met so many people, including designers, by the advent of social media. On, um, I have met some of the top designers. I've just texted them on Messenger, and they've talked to me, and... Uh, uh, we've, I've met them at retreats and things like that. So we've got to meet friends of all colors, 
nationalities, persuasions, local people, which is really nice. So it, it's really good. Um, you know, we all have something in common. So that's how, that, that's how good cross-stitch is. And in general, the politics are such that we're meeting in, in such a, uh, you know, in such a way that politics never has to come up. So we can be friends with people that are completely different in values or different in politi political persuasion or difficult, uh, di different in color, completely different and still get along. So that is a really good thing. Okay, um, another good thing, for the most part, designers get along. They're competitors because in general, uh, the designers, it's their business. So they all get along, or at least they make the appearance. Now, occasionally there are some conflicts that become public with designers. For example, if somebody, uh, let's say you're a designer and you're selling an exclusive and it comes as a kit, and, uh, or you can, a kit, or you can buy just the, the chart. And let's say the kit is where the money is and you made an investment in that kit. Last thing you need is somebody else swooping in there to, um, to, to get, let's say, their floss in there to be used or their linen. Oh, you can use mine instead so that the person doesn't buy the kits. You know, there's always a happy medium there. Perhaps the person that's trying to sell the alternative should wait or talk to them. Hey, can I just give your kit a week to, to sell and then I'll, I'll afterwards? I mean, but you do see that conflict sometimes. Um, you also have, I have seen conflicts of real politics where one designer comes out with something that in a public fashion that's very uh, political and the other designer doesn't like it. I've seen some designers um, that's happened. I even saw one that uh, accused another designer of plagiarism um, and that was public. So of course um, these little squabbles happen but I'd say 99% of the time designers all get along. Another good that's obvious is there is an opportunity to make money for people that don't even design. So you can make money in multiple ways. You can sell goods or services or both. So you can design things on your own. You could make charts. Um, you can be a shop, an online shop. You can invest and be a regular shop, a brick and mortar. Um, you can sell just linen. You can sell just floss. You can be an entrepreneur and uh, get, get an exclusive from a designer, let's say a very popular designer, and split the profits with them and sell this exclusive kit, maybe for a little bonus, and make money that way. Um, there's a lot of money to be made, and there is a lot of money being made. Think about all the retreats. Okay, so all those retreats make money. The hotel makes money. The person organizing the treat makes money. That's the point. They wouldn't do it for free. Now, do some make more money than others? Absolutely. I do know somebody who does retreats that doesn't make very much at all. Um, she makes enough basically to pay for herself. So uh, she pays for her addiction with uh, that money, but she doesn't make any money. On the other hand, I know they're of people, I don't know them personally, but I, I do look at the prices and I've done the math, um, that do probably make a decent amount of money doing these retreats. Excellent, absolutely a bonus and a good thing. So these are all good, obvious, um, good, obvious politics of cross-stitch, meaning it's okay to make money, um, they get along, whether or not they like each other, okay? Maybe in, 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 they don't really like each other, but at least on, uh, in public, the overwhelming majority get along. So these are all bonuses, okay? Seems very, very obvious. Um, they're not so bad. 
but not so bad. Um, shops and online retailers are uh, brick and mortar shops and online retailers uh, have a conflict. They sort of don't like each other. Maybe it's gotten a little bit better over time, but the problem is that when these online shops appeared, the brick and mortar suffer. And, uh, and what happened is a lot of them went out of business. Now, you probably don't know this, but there was a time that the Nashville Needleworks show would not allow uh, online retailers in. You had to be a brick and mortar shop. And also some of the, uh, some of the designers wouldn't even sell to online retailers. Now that time has come and went. Okay, so right now they're really, you can be an online retailer. So what has happened to brick and mortars that have survived because they had to adapt? Imagine you are a, excuse me, brick and mortar. Imagine that you had a, um, I'm going to have to get rid of that phone call. <laughs> Imagine that you had a store and you have X overhead, electric, rent, employees, um, insurance. I mean, you name it. The overhead is really high for businesses, way over 50% for most businesses, actually. So like you have all this overhead and you're competing against someone who works out of their home and you both pay the same for the wholesale products. Who wins? Right? So shops have had to adapt. Many shops are also online retailers. So they have two avenues to make income. So they are now gathering that online income and getting the income of people who come in. And how do they get people to come in? Well, they get people to come in by having events such as retreats and designers and, and uh, all kinds of things. Because if you have people on a weekend, let's say th uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you have a designer and you're, you have now a retreat and you're going to make money on the retreat, meaning um, you're organizing it and uh, you're charging X dollars, paying the designer, paying for um, your overhead and paying for whatever supplies and there, you put a margin in there now you're making money in addition the people are coming to your store and they're spending money because people love to buy stuff at retreats so those are how designers have over uh, designers excuse me how shops have overcome but there still is some tension there if you talk to traditional shops. They don't, they're, they're, they were very unhappy about having to really lose so much of their business to these people that have low overhead and work out of their home. Okay, so that is, that is a problem. Um, another not so bad, but problem is that there is a proliferation of online shops, some of which are good and some of which are bad. And I'll tell you, there are some shops out there that have good intentions, but have issues. And the issues are that they may have inventory that they don't really have. So here they're advertising that they have all this different stuff and you might order it and never get it. That, that's not uncommon. And then by the time you realize you didn't get it and the shop hands you back your money because they can't get it either, um, they've kept your money. They've kept your money for months sometimes. And uh, I ask myself, why are they still in business? Because there's so many people who don't know. So in general, if you see an item that no one else has and you want to put it in your basket and use PayPal, whatever, to pay for it, and only use on online shops, PayPal, or um, credit cards because you need protection, okay? And maybe they do it to float the money. I don't know. Or maybe they have good intentions and, oh man, I think I can get that chart. Let me keep it up. And they don't, which is probably more what it is. 
Um, so be really careful, but unfortunately, there's a proliferation and some of the shops are not reputable, okay? Also, the proliferation has led to some people not being able to make it. If they can't market themselves, they can't get top billing on Google, they can't um, get their name out there on Instagram and Facebook, um, they, can't, they can't make it because there's so many shops. So that's uh, not so bad. And this is, uh, you know, uh, we are a constitutional republic where, cap where capitalism is the rule in business. So the strong survive and the weak do not. And that, that's it. But there is a prolifer proliferation of shops. Another not so bad is that cross-stitch can be very expensive for people and create this FOMO, and create feeling badly, actually. Let's say you want to go to a retreat. Now, there are retreats every day of the year, maybe minus Christmas, but there are retreats. If you wanted to go to a retreat and spend your entire life every day at a retreat, I bet you could, okay? Um, certainly you could every weekend, or just about. And a lot of people don't have the time off from work, don't have the funds, or don't want to leave their family members and can't go to these retreats. They see everybody going to these retreats and posting and blah, 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 and they feel bad, okay? They also feel bad that they can't buy the latest and the greatest and the newest. They see everybody talking about Nashville. Well, maybe you're struggling you barely have enough money to pay your rent and put food on the table, and you feel sort of bad. Now, it's a not so bad thing because there's an awful lot of people who enjoy that, and there's a lot of freebies and a lot of free stuff. But it's, you know, it, it's created this, this, this frenzy of spending money. And again, making money means people are spending money. And boy, are they spending money. So that's a not so bad. Um, let's see. I think I went through the not so bad. Let's go through the ugly. Ooh, this is the, the bad one. I didn't want to really go through with this, but yeah. I'm going to go through these one at a time of what I feel are the ugly things the ugly cross-stitch politics, okay? Disclaimer, this is my perspective, okay? Your perspective may be different and there may be experts in the field who disagree, but I've been running my own page for a while. I have met thousands of cross-stitchers, probably one way or another, okay? Maybe more like a few hundred that I've actually met, I've talked to many people. I am friendly with a, with a, a cross-stitch shop. This is my view. Disclaimer. Okay. The ugly. Tyrants. Yes, we all know them. There are people online feel very enabled. Really, they feel like they can be big and bad and nothing can happen to them. They have this online persona. And you will notice that some of the tyrant kind of people, if you look at their Facebook photo, don't even have a photo. They'll have a picture of something or maybe a piece of them, their arm or who knows. And the reason is it's so easy to be me when you don't show your face, okay? Um, tyrants, let me give you some example. There are tyrants who run pages that sell exclusives, for example. These tyrants make money on those pages because they get a piece of every exclusive that they sell. And once they sell one that's successful, they show the amount of money that's made to another designer. And that designer says, wow, it's an opportunity. And, and they're good at it. So the good is they're making money and I do not have an issue with that. That's fine. It's American way. Make money. But then they make, they start making these rules because they make their items so wanted 
that you don't get it unless you follow my rule, okay? And if you don't like it, I'm going to publicly shame you. I'm going to say bad things about you. And I'm going to kick you off and block you. And everybody's going to know I did that. So yes, these tyrants exist. They also exist on some not-for-profit pages too, like the um, some of the um, the uh, what do you call that? The stash unloading kind of pages. So you'll get people that like to, and once again, take a look. Faces in there. Um, the, the you you get a look at somebody, and they'll and they'll give you very uh, some difficult things. You can sell this. You can't sell this, but I can sell it. For example, I've seen people do that. They they have their own items they sell, and uh, nobody can compete with their items. Or if you don't put it in a exact um, format that they want, I mean, who cares? As long as you you know have one posting, one picture. Why does it have to be? I I don't know. Um, so they they they'll kick you off. They'll kick you off. And um, that's okay, they can, it's their page, but they're tyrants in my opinion. Um, people need to be a little bit more, I don't know, they shouldn't, they, you know, they get a power trip. They get a power trip of I'm in charge and you're not. So they exist. Now we're not, my not, I'm certainly not gonna say who they are. I don't wanna even know who they are, half of them they're out there and um that's okay let them be tyrants and let them have a bunch of uh of uh slaves of serfs who follow them the, the kings okay so those are that's an ugly in my opinion okay but oh, always be aware of somebody who runs a group that won't show you their face always be aware two copyright infringement hmm that is a real ugly. Copyright infringement is where, you know, they, people will literally steal, steal a design, steal this, put it into a computer program, spit it out and make it their own. They often sell PDFs. They often sell photocopies. Um, like, uh, they may even photocopy a chart and put their own name on it. Um, beware of sites that originate in China and Russia. Beware of Amazon. Okay. eBay. People have been caught. They, uh, they have taken an out of print chart and photocopied it and sold it. Okay. Copyright infringement. And it exists. Etsy. A lot of copyright infringement on there. I found Renato Perlin. I found, um, I believe it was a hands-on design. I found there's a lady who has a Christmas, all Christmas on their designs, and she put nobody's name on it as if it's her own. And when I, when I, I actually uh, emailed her, she gave me a nasty answer and said, of course I know it's theirs. Yeah, it, it's, it's on the chart. Well, if it's on the chart, why not put it on your page? I mean, there's a lot out there. There's also people who post them for free on, um, I forgot that website where you can find uh, all the, the, like the pictures and recipes and everything, but uh, people will post them out there just because there are Facebook pages that people, all they do is share free charts and a lot of them are illegal charts, okay? Nobody does anything about it. It's very difficult. The actual designers need to complain about it. And even then it's difficult. Facebook takes almost nothing down. I have, I have personally seen some really hateful things and they didn't take them down. They don't do anything. Um, and Etsy certainly does nothing either. So, uh, you know, that is bad. There's pseudo copyright infringement where they, you know, what, there are things that do not have a, any copyright at all to them. Um, things that are hundreds of years old, for example. The Declaration of Independence does not have a copyright. So you can take quotes from it. You can put the Declaration on shirts. You can do whatever you want. Um, old books like Dickens, no copyright. 
okay? Old, some of these old music songs, you can use them as much as you want. It's the same thing with samplers. So if you have an antique sampler that nobody has already made, copyrighted, and made into a uh, their, their chart, the chart can be copyrighted, okay? But nobody's done that, and it's hanging in a museum, and the museum really hasn't um, notified, hasn't done anything. Somebody theoretically could come in and take a photo and make their own chart, and it's questionable whether or not. I have heard both arguments on that. Either way, it's sort of a not a nice thing to do. Um, it's out there. The other thing people do that is a bad thing, that is an ugly thing, is take pieces of charts. So charts that maybe Hands Across the Sea made, Queenstown, Needlepoint Press, they'll take a little piece of that, a little piece of that, a little piece of that, put them together and make their own chart. That's like stealing music riffs, okay? Well, you put this guy's music in there and it doesn't fly, okay? It's not a good thing. It is illegal. So beware of that, and you may not even know, all right? But if it's too good to be true, be careful. Other issues are PDFs. Now, PDFs are not ugly, okay? I shouldn't be in there. But there are some designers who sell really cheap PDFs, and I mean two, three dollar PDFs. It is hard for des for designers, the, you know, literal, de you know, to compete with that. And uh, some of those really cheap PDFs are bootleg. So be bootleg copyright infringement. Okay, so be really aware. Another ugly is when politics end up in designers. Uh, work and uh, floss tube. Um, for example, if you, during the, uh, I call it the Black Lives Matter era, because Black Lives Matter has been uh, sort of de de dethroned for, I'm not even going there, but when they were very uh, popular, people had this little black thing, um, there were designers who made Black Lives Matter actual designs. That's infusing your politics into, into your, your work. Now, as a consumer, you have, the buyers have a right not to buy. Once again, I sort of didn't like it. Um, I have no issue with putting um, things that for the uh, environment, things that are, um, you know, famous women, for example, um, but, you know, if you were to, you know, to do a uh, re-elect whoever and you do a cross stitch and you're a fairly famous designer, you're now making a political statement in your business world. And in my opinion, again, my opinion, it doesn't belong there, nor does it belong in your floss tube video. I watched a floss tube video that unfortunately half of the video was about how wrong anybody who voted for Trump was. I was like, I turned it off. I was like, oh, come, come on. So what you do in your own world, on your own Facebook page, your own Instagram, your house with your friends is, is what you do. But when you start infusing it, um, I think that is ugly, okay? And that goes for both sides. If I saw a, uh, a Brandon uh, uh, pattern, I'd be fairly appalled by it myself. I'd be like, oh, okay, you've now just infused this, uh, you, you know, you've taken your beautiful samplers and uh, made it that there's a portion of population who probably won't buy them anymore. Um, why? I don't know. But I, I would just, I really do feel like that's, um, that's wrong. Another ugly, and I'm going to call them pot stirs. Okay. Pot stirs. Pot stirs are people that, well, they'll post controversial things on, uh, sell controversial things. I'll, I'll give you a good example. This came in a box. This is Portrait of Civil War, and there's actually quite a few 
patterns on here. Okay, I'm showing it. You've got both sides, right? You've got the uh, the rebel flag. You've got a American flag. Um, you've got, um, I think that's Robert E. Lee. I think that is uh, Grant. I think it's Ulysses Grant. Um, you've got some Confederate soldiers, and you've got some um, Northern soldiers. I think this was kind of cool. This was a uh, leisure arts. It's pretty old. Um, 1990. Not as old as I thought, but 1990. And uh, apparently somebody had used it because some of them are, um, you can see, but they've just got highlighter on them. This kit just came in like a box, like I had gotten at a thrift store, or whatever. So um, let's say I put this up, and I think there's nothing wrong with this because, yes and no, but I think there's nothing wrong with this because, uh, you know, it's got both, uh, it is part of American history. Um, you know, the whole cause of the Civil War is very controversial. I know there are different causes and, um, you know, I can, I'm a student of American history and uh, yes, there are different causes. Perhaps if I was a descendant of a slave, I would feel different, okay? But there are different sides and there are people that do have ancestors who fought for what they thought was right. Um, so I put, you know, if I put this up, uh, I probably would scroll by if I wasn't interested, but there are people that would go nuts on this, okay? And start commenting and making it worse, and those people love to stir the pot. So that is an ugly thing, the whole pot stirring. If you're not going to buy it, if you're not going to buy it, scroll on. Now, if it's something egregious, which I would consider, you know, something that is uh, murder everybody, um, a Nazi flag, you know, and uh, there is no redemption of the Nazi flag. Um, things like that, I probably would contact the uh, administrator, the admin, and say, hey, that needs to come down. I mean, that's just really bad, you know. Um, but, you know, something like this, um, it's pot stirring. It really is. And, um, you know, that's, uh, that's an ugly, the pot stirring. And then um, what I'm going to call modern, quote unquote, cross stitch is another ugly. That is subversive cross stitch. Now, to each his own, to each his own. Um, I just think it's horrible. I think that, um, that it is to put the F word, the P word, pictures of female and male body parts, um, devil horns, um, just things that are downright uh, pornographic and, uh, what's the word, profanity, um, to put it out there. It's just, it's, it is such a low thing. It is the, the lowest of the low, okay? Um, I'm not talking about, you know, putting maybe an LGBTQ flag, if that's your thing. No, that, I don't consider that um, subversive. What I consider subversive is the F word in big, bold letters. It's out there. Why? Why are you doing this? Do you want people to come to your home and see that on your wall? Your grandchild? Your nephew? Your brother? Your mother? Okay, so I don't quite get it, but that is, um, that is, I'm putting that in the ugly because I have no idea how we got from gorgeous samplers like that <laughs> to and holiday items like, uh, you know, 4th of July fireworks to, uh, I don't know, things like the JJ's, <laughs> you know, I'm like, what? What is that? So anyway, I'm putting that in the ugly. Um, I did make a list. So anyway, like I said, this is my perspective, right or wrong, okay? And, um, you know, in my opinion, and I've tried very hard never to state anything in my on my page 
that has to do with a political candidate or anything else for that matter. The only thing I censor from my stage is from my page is um, is anything with profanity. Okay, that's where I draw the line. No profanity. But everything else, whatever you like, whatever you want. So, um, you know, I, I, I think that the politics of cross-stitch uh, should be that people are, just like when I go to work, um, I don't care who you are, they all get treated the same. Um, you should be a business or a professional or just neutral, okay? What you do in your private life is a whole other ballgame. People don't like it, they don't have to see it, okay? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, it's the second time I have made this vi exact video because, uh, I don't know, I, I didn't want to put my own politics into it, and my old video I did. I'd like to hear your opinions, so below, please tell me your opinions, and add to this. If you think there's another good politic thing, and I think some people might say, here's my the one thing I, I didn't say, is that some people might say that the, through cross-stitch, they're sharing their, uh, their politics, meaning they're sharing their religion, they're sharing their, uh, what they consider the right way that this country should head, he head, and that may be a few separate ways, but I think some people would put that in the good, okay? I didn't put that in my good, I don't know, but um, I, th I think that, sh that should have belonged in there. Anyway, uh, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. I appreciate it and have a great week.